Hey there, everybody. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. I've got uh, kind of a special thing. We're uh, working on the Ram again. Um, today, we're going to do some service because at that 67,000 mile mark, um, this perform service uh, pops up on the dash. And what it comes down to is it's this stupid little filter. Well, it's not even a little, but this stupid filter that goes in um underneath the uh the cover it's a crankcase um filter for the uh ccb ccb valve um anyway we're going to replace that today but while we've got everything apart on the top side we're also going to put in a full banks monster ram uh intake plenum with the engineered intake plate which is the grid heater delete we're also using as you can see i've already got it installed right there the gdp um delete uh egr delete so we're gonna clean this thing up do a little bit of weight reduction and get some more power and uh power torque and throttle response out of her so here we go all right, so first off, you gotta take the engine oil dipstick out. That needs put off to the side, obviously, so you do not lose it, because um, that would just be bad news. No, I'm not wiping mine off yet, just because I'm not putting it right back in. All right, now, you see those uh, eight millimeter bolts? And that's what we need to start. We need to take those bad boys out. See if I can't get a better angle. There's also two back here on the back side. You know, I'm going to make sure you get those two. And this can be somewhat of a reach depending on what you've got. Some of y'all just might want to use a ladder. Me, on the other hand, I can't because I'm in a wheelchair and it sucks. But it is what it is. I'll make do. I'll do some reaching. We'll get one, then we'll get the other. Once you get all them bolts out, go ahead and just grab this thing. Lift up. Pull it out of the way. All right, once you get all those eight bolts out, you'll be able to remove the valve cover and you'll be able to see the original um, CC, CCV filter. Gosh, I can't, I can never say that one right. So once you pull that thing out, you can basically junk this old one because it's just a junk filter. And then you'll be able to put in your brand new one. Now, because I'm a Cummins freak and I absolutely love my Cummins, I'm using a Fleet Guard. Fleet Guard is manufactured by Cummins. Now, currently, as this video is being made, last I heard, Cummins is selling Fleet Guard. Cummins owns Fleet Guard at the moment, but I think they are in the process of selling off Fleet Guard. Either way, Fleet Guard and Cummins has had a long, long relationship. I don't see that relationship going bad, so I will probably always use a Fleet Guard filter on the top side right here. So once this is all done, put your new filter back in place. Put your uh, valve cover back on. Put your oil cap back on. And then hook up that hose back there. See it right here? That had to come off of your breather. So 
that is the portion of servicing for the performed service on the dash. One thing I forgot to say, one thing I forgot to say was there are two eight millimeter bolts right here. They hold that bracket on in place. You can't really get to them with the engine cover on top, so you need to take them out now. Take these out because it will not be reused. We probably won't even put that one plastic piece that wraps all the way around and over top on either. So take these out, remove the bracket, set everything aside, put the engine cover back on. Put your oil cap back on. Okay, now, see that bracket that holds the oil dipstick tube on? You need to take that completely off of your um, intake horn. So then that way we can get things moved out of the way. There's that um, plug right there. That came out from right there. Unplug the EGR, unplug the map sensor, you're gonna wanna go through and unplug the thermocoupler, which is right there. Um, ultimately, you just wanna go through and you wanna get all that stuff unplugged. So we're gonna try and get all this apart. Some of it might be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but just go ahead and it's, uh, 10 millimeter bolts three of them takes that whole bracket off of the dipstick uh for the dipstick tube bracket so i already busted them loose before i started video and then i was like oh no so you don't want to take this kind of get it up and out of your way for a hot ticket come through and get this bracket out of here Ultimately, this bracket will eventually go on to the new horn. Um, but currently, it's in the way. So, do yourself a favor. Take it apart. You got to take it apart anyway. Put it on the new horn. That's a long bolt for a bracket. So once you do that, you can just kind of take it and tuck it out of the way. As you can see what I've done here, I just kind of moved it out of the way. And then that'll make room for them bolts down there on the top of your intake horn. It's kind of hard to see those back ones, but there it is, right there, oh, underneath that cable. Sorry, right there. All right, so next you're gonna wanna take the whole intake horn out. Um, you got everything out of the play, out of the way. You take out your EGR tube, and we're getting ready to take out all the EGR coolers, um, EGR actuator, all that junk. Um, let me give you a quick view. That's your factory uh, heater grade plenum. Um, it's what it looks like when you use an EGR. That is just downright nasty. All I can say is fuck you, Democrats, for uh, worrying about all this so-called emissions on regular duty trucks. I mean, this is just downright dumb. Y'all haven't even seen the inside of the uh, you know, the intake uh, horn from the factory. I mean, geez, wait till I show you that. All right, there you go. The factory heater grid is out. 
Uh, that's kind of what it looks like. Like I said, there is more soot and junk down in there because of an EGR. Um, that should never be the case. I don't really care. That's exhaust gas that is causing all that. That's an intake. An intake should never be that dirty. And I told you, I was gonna show you the plenum. Well, here you go. Look at that shit. I mean, that is just downright nasty. I mean, look all up in there. Look at how that is messing up all the airflow. And yet they want to say that doing all these EGRs and emissions controls is going to be better, better fuel economy, better this, better that. Nope. Nope. That is not what you want on an intake. You want a smooth, clean surface on the intake. So, anywho, you got to remove your entire fuel rail, all the fuel lines. There's the fuel lines. You got to pull everything out. Get it all out. Everything down and through there. Just be careful. Don't get any shit down inside there that you shouldn't. Don't drop no nuts or whatnot. I mean, just get it out. And then, once you get that out, we are going to put in this nice, new, shiny heater grid delete from Banks. Mmm, look at that. Get you some, get you some. Whew. That just looks good. All right, well, let's get her in. Yep. All right, here we go. This is everything put back in place. Um, it's the Banks Monster Ram. I'll tell you, that was a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, see that thing that says USA? That's a foam piece. You got to remove it. You got to remove all the factory fuel lines. You got to remove everything. I mean, everything. And then trying to get it all placed back together, that's, a, that's another whole nother beast. But either way, the Banks Monster Ram intake horn is on. I've got the um, throttle valve delete from uh, Black Market Performance. I'll put the, I'll put all the links down in the in the description of this video, and then the EGR uh, delete from GDP. Um, and that just deletes the EGR uh, valve on this side. I mean, you still got to delete the the tube that comes across here and it connects into there. You got to delete all that garbage over there. So I'm working on it. It's just going to take me some more time. You know, no big deal. But sorry, I can't like what make you or make it to where you can watch me tear it apart as um as I'm tearing it apart. It just, uh, camera angles and everything just kind of sucks. So, anywho, there you have it. Okay, so this here is the servo um, for the EGR valve. Um, as you can see, there are four bolts in this section. You have to take out some eight millimeter um, uh, cover bolts to remove the factory heat shields. So there's a couple here and whatnot, and a couple down here. Um, and then there are four 10 millimeters that you have to take out to remove this. And then on the servo, as you can see over here, there's a spot for two 10 millimeters there. And then a spot over here for two 10 millimeters. And then this whole whole thing will come out. Now, if you are keeping your EGR cooler and everything, um, by, me, by all means, uh, leave this on. But if you're running the full delete kit like I am, throw this shit in the trash. 
All right, here we are. We're back in it. Got the Banks Monster Ram all connected. Valve cover, CCB filter all plugged in. Now, honestly, you don't even need that thing. Um, if you do the, the deletes, you can actually delete your CCV valves uh, or the CCV filter because you don't even run the plug. There's a plug right back here for your CCV filter um, and your crankcase ventilation, all right? And that plug, I actually have plugged into a single wire, which is right there, right at the top of my finger. That's a pink wire. That pink wire runs in through the dash to my uh, push button um, selection. So I can select what uh, what tune I want with a shift on the fly push button instead of having to, instead of drilling into your dash. That's pretty cool. I got that from Black Market Performance too. So no, I'm not sponsored by Milwaukee, but these lights are badass. Um, if you get the chance to buy a couple of them, definitely do so. All right, stepping over here. Um, we got everything removed, um, the uh, EGR cooler, the EGR cooler bracket, um, all the EGR servo, everything that, everything that you could think of that's EGR related has come out. And the crossover tube, all of that, which is really nice because that will actually open up room for if and when we decide to do a, uh, a header performance header so um right here on the 2019s and up this little piece here from gdp it basically just holds this uh coupler in that coupler has uh a barb side on one side and a um smooth with an o-ring on this side and it just pushes into this hard pipe well this is what holds it in place I know it doesn't look like much, but you know, once you once once it starts to push itself out, it'll hold up just fine. So you're gonna lose a little bit of coolant. Just make sure you know you run it for a little bit, top it off as needed. Um, this here, I know it looks funky. It's for a bracket that runs across to help hold everything in. I think I'm still gonna put that bracket in. I just don't have it in there yet. Trying to show you guys everything. Uh, one of the other things too is you're going to have a lot of plugs that you are not going to use. Um, I got one right there. It kind of drops down to there. I'm not using that plug and that's actually an extension. So I think I'm going to take that extension off and then I'm going to tape up uh, with electrical tape to prevent any water um, corrosion of any sort in those plugs. I think there's a total of four or five. Um, but uh, there you have it. I mean, sorry this one. I couldn't really work on it and video it at the same time. It just things weren't working out for me. But I'm, I'm trying to help maybe show you what it will look like. Um, but uh, I'll put links down in the bottom to let everybody know what's what. And um, that way we can, or I can, I can let you know where I got everything from. Uh, like I said, I got GDP, the Banks Monster Ram, um, Black Market Performance, uh, Throttle Valve Delete. Um, I got the Black Market Performance um, Push Button Shift on the Fly. So... Uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, don't feel free to hit me up. Make sure, you know, leave it, leave a comment down below. And um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like the video. Thanks.